This is an RPG-7. And this is a Carl Gustav M2. These are rocket launchers and they fire high explosive rockets. Well, this one's not. This one's inert so that we can safely handle it for demonstration purposes, but we are firing precision machined metal bodied high explosive RPG rounds. The real deal. The real deal. Yep, we're gonna be looking at the entire launch procedure, how that works. We're gonna look at the back blast. I hear that's pretty darn dangerous. It is indeed. Just the overall experience of firing a real rocket launcher, you know, before we get into blowing stuff up. Naturally. So, welcome back to Ballistic High Speed. Well, today on Ballistic High Speed, we will be bringing to you the Carl Gustav M2 in beautiful slow motion activity. This was brought out by the gentleman to my right. This is Todd Kern. Todd, what's going on here? I'm Todd with PA2A. Uh, today we have the Carl Gustav M2 recoilless rifle. What makes this thing pretty cool is this is a breech loading rifle. It takes an 84 millimeter cartridge. We have some prototype rounds with us today. Eventually we're gonna have some uh, legitimate high explosive rounds available for this thing. What differentiates this from something like a, a more well-known launcher like the RPG-7 or the M72 Law is that this is a recoilless rifle and not a, a rocket launcher. Recoilless rifle meaning propellant is behind the projectile, not inside of it, like in the, the PG-7 rockets or the M72 Law rounds. That seemed like a pretty painless load there. That was the whole load. That was the procedure. whole thing, yep. And before everybody freaks out, we are gonna have high explosive RPGs next. Well, Todd, thanks for coming out. Let's load up some rounds and let's see what this looks like in high speed. Let's do it. All right, Todd, load it up. Back blast clear. Back blast is clear. Firing the Carl Gustav in three, two, one. Whoa! That little delay threw me off. Alrighty, we're gonna do this uh, RPG-7. We have, while it is an all metal, this one is inert, but have no fear, high explosive rockets are coming soon. All right, Todd, load me up. Back blast clear. Back blast is clear. All right, firing the RPG-7. Three, two, one. <laughs> Woo! -hoo 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 -hoo! Holy smokes! I mean, that's a huge boom, but I I felt almost nothing. That's recoilless for you. That's intense. First time you ever done that? Yeah. You gotta shoot this. I get to shoot it? You gotta shoot this. All right, cool. Yeah. Back blast clear. Ready on high speed? High speed's ready. Yeah. Firing the RPG-7 in three, two, one. <laughs> Hell yeah. Woo, triggered.
All right, so Todd is actually the one developing all of these kind of prototype rounds that are gonna move into high explosive. He can't wait to shoot it. He was nice enough to let me take the first shot. I believe I'm the first like civilian to shoot one. To my knowledge. Okay, appreciate that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have him kneel down and we're gonna see what backblast would do if somebody accidentally had their hand over the backblast area. We know it's dangerous, we just saw it go, but what does it look like on an analog? So Todd's gonna do the honors so he gets to shoot it and we get our answers, because we like science. High speed ready. Cut. Firing in three, two, one. <laughs> Where did the hand go? <laughs> Here, look, the hand is gone. <laughs> Oh, that was so good. Where did it go? I saw something go whipping down. It's right here. That was so damn funny. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's going to hurt. Damn. Total separate. I mean, that, that, it's got to be like third degree burns, right? Fingers coming out of the skin. Yeah. It's almost degloved. That's nuts. And I think it stands to reason that if you, as a human, had your hand there, it wouldn't just leave so easily. So it may even oh, yeah. be worse because it would have to push more out of the way. That's insane. Wow. That's going to be hopefully some wicked high speed. I wonder if we'll even see it through the smoke. I don't know. But thanks to Ballistic Dummy Lab. Yeah. It's always way better when you can actually oh, see absolutely. what's going on. Okay, I think we all saw this one coming. We've seen the Carl Gustav backblast, so now we're gonna do the RPG-7, and in, instead of a hand, we have a head. I do wanna notate, he does have one cut because he's been used once already. Other than that, he's good to go, no cracks. My no guess nothing. is, we're not even gonna notice. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> all right, Todd. All right. Yeah. Cameras are rolling on you. All right, this is the RPG-7 versus ballistic dummy head. Three. Two, one. Oh. Call 911. Call 911. What's, what's bleeding? His face. On November 14th at 3 p.m., Adam experienced a catastrophic failure during an RPG launch, and that hospitalized him. It was pretty bad. He is okay. He is recovering right now as I'm speaking to you. It's probably going to be a very long recovery. I wanted to reach out to you guys with his permission, of course, to let you all know that this has happened, but life and limb is intact and that's the important part. Hopefully all of you will keep him in your thoughts and he's expected to make a full recovery. It's just gonna be a long recovery. In short, he had third degree burns, broken bones, lacerations on his face and other areas. And yeah. Later discussion for a later time. Um, as far as I can tell, Adam does want to come back on the channel. He wants the channel to continue, and we will likely talk with all of you about the entire thing, what happened, why it may have happened, what can we learn from it. It's just one of those things where no matter how much you pay attention to safety, how much effort you put into preparing things, there's always the inherent risk of something going wrong, and that was one of those times. Adam's been made fun of before for how much he pays attention to safety on other videos. And so I've never questioned him on that. I've always respected his effort in paying attention to safety. And he's always been willing to take that risk on this channel. Anytime he's ever fired a gun, anytime he's ever worked with explosives, he's always been willing to take that risk alongside me to bring you guys this channel, bring you guys content. And I respect him immensely for that. 
So yeah, it was, uh, it was not good. So if you guys could please have a sensitive, thoughtful mindset about this, if you want to leave him comments down below at some point, he's, he's going to read them. So please leave him positive thoughts and inspirational messages if you'd like, and he'll read them and I'm sure he'll appreciate them, but he will, as far as I can tell, he wants to come back and talk with all of you about what happened. So just know that he is okay. He is recovering. Nobody's at fault for this. There is no negligence involved on any part of this. Adam's always made sure that things are as safe as they possibly can be. And it was just one of the factors outside of our control. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. And hopefully we'll see you again soon.